What's going on everyone? It's Sof here, bringing you the first match in our Kanto True Power Tournament. Today we've got a special battle between Gym Leader Brock of Viridian City and recent Elite 4 member and former Gym Leader Koga of Fuchsia. If you guys haven't seen the True Power episodes where we actually establish their best teams using their main series appearances and talk about the secrets of the characters themselves, make sure to check those out, I'll leave those in the description below. But for now, let's head into the stadium for what is bound to be a fun match. Alright, here we are with the preparations being made for the battle, and here on the team preview screen we've got two really solid looking teams. In terms of types, honestly it's hard to say who's got the upper hand, but Rock does resist poison so that is a factor to consider. Koga's gonna have to look out for that Steelix I would say, while Brock is definitely gonna have to look out for that Tentacruel. But without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready, so let's get into the battle. And here we go, Elite Four Koga versus Gym Leader Brock. Honestly, this match could go either way, but we're about to find out what's going to happen. Koga, starting off with the Tentacruel, which is arguably the biggest threat for Brock's team, and Brock going out with the Steelix first. An interesting choice, however, that Tentacruel is going to serve a big, big problem for Brock. What is he going to do here? He's going to send out the Omastar, a good switch in. We're going to see what the Tentacruel is going to do. It's going to go for Toxic Spikes. Setting up right away on the field. Hazards are on the field. What is Brock going to do to respond to this? I have no idea. Tentacruel is outspeeding, coming in with the Acid Spray, which is not going to do that much damage, but it is going to lower Omastar's special defense, however, which is perhaps part of Koga's strategy here. Omastar going with the Earth Power. That is going to be super effective on the Tentacruel, although it doesn't do too much, especially after that Black Sludge recovery that Tentacruel is going to get. Probably a three-hit KO or so. So this is looking a little scary for the Omastar, and the Tentacruel is going in with the Scald, and gets the Burn! Burn coming in on the Omastar, not going to be too much of a problem offensively, however defensively racking up that damage every turn. Here comes another Earth Power! Tentacruel staying alive, staying alive there, coming in with the Black Sludge recovery while Omastar gets hurt by that Burn. This is a very interesting predicament we've got here, and Tentacruel outspeeding again, coming in with the Scald, taking out! The Omastar, the first KO of the match. So that Tentacruel is actually, you know what? Brock got some damage on it. I think that's the most he could have hoped for here. But what is he going to do to finish that thing off? He sends out the Aerodactyl, arguably his fastest, his speediest threat that he's got on his team. Should be able to handle that Tentacruel pretty well, I would say, depending on what move he uses. But Koga coming in with the switch to Weezing, which is going to be a very, actually another threat for Brock's team. Brock has a very, very physically offensive team, however that Weezing is quite physically defensive, I would say. And of course, that Thunderfang doing almost nothing to the Weezing. Brock is going to have to switch out here. What does he choose? The Tyranitar! Perhaps hoping to get some of that residual Sandstorm damage once it switches in. However, it is going to get poisoned by the Toxic Spice, which is not ideal indeed. Uh, Weezing coming in, he's trying to get the burn off on the Tyranitar, well on the Aerodactyl actually. However, Brock switching into the Tyranitar and immediately getting poisoned prevented that burn from going off, so Brock basically got a free switch in for Tyranitar there. Amazing! Incredible! Koga actually gonna have to be forced to switch in to Toxicroak. Now Toxicroak is a very, very good Tyranitar counter. Here comes the crunch on Tyranitar, can he get the defense drop? He does not, and it's not very effective. Of course, not going to do too, too much, given how strong Tyranitar is. However, that Sandstorm damage is starting to rack up on Koga's team. That is a very valuable part of Brock's team, I would say. And now Brock switching out. This is a very, very active game. Switching into the Aerodactyl. Aerodactyl is a good choice here. However, I fear Toxic... Yeah, here comes the, uh, the Drain Punch on Toxicroak. Doing over half, and he's going to get a lot of recovery back from that, too. However, Aerodactyl will be able to outspeed, so ultimately, a good switch in for Brock, I would say. It depends what, what Koga's gonna do here. He might go back into the Weezing. He is! He's gonna go back into the Weezing and tank whatever Aerodactyl's gonna use. Probably not Thunderfang this time, though. And he is gonna go for the Aerial Ace. Does a little chunk of damage, including Sandstorm. That's not terrible, because the Black Sludge won't really be recovering much. Oh man, this is quite a predicament we've got here. This is very interesting. Honestly, kind of the way I imagined these two types playing out. Weezing going on in with the Sludge Bomb. Not very effective. The Sandstorm is now gone. Weezing going to get some more recovery now because of that. And of course, the special defense of Brock's Rock-type Pokemon is going to go down after that Sandstorm stops. Here comes the Rock Slide going over half on the Weezing. Uh, and the Weezing get... F it flinched! 
There's the flinch on the rock slide. That was probably really necessary for Brock. Here comes another rock slide. Can he get the flinch again? Here it comes. Not, not bad damage. Not terrible for a physical wall like Weezing, but here comes another sludge bomb. Is it going to take it out? No! The Aerodactyl survives on 13 HP. Oh man, it looks like the Weezing might just outdo the Aerodactyl here. However, it all depends if we get that flinch. Here comes another rock slide, bringing the Weezing into the red. And the Weezing comes in with another flinch! Another flinch, a very necessary flinch for that Aerodactyl. Is Aerodactyl now going to... Yeah, Koga has nothing he wants to switch into that. Here comes the rock slide. Connects. Weezing is down. One of the big, big threats for Brock's team in terms of just stopping it in its tracks. And in comes Koga with the Skun Tank. Skun Tank actually not an ideal switch. However, it might go for the Sucker Punch, in which case Brock just made an amazing play. Switching into the Tyranitar. Let's see what happens. Activating that Sandstream again, of course. More residual damage. And here comes it was, it was the Sucker Punch. Brock pulling off an amazing switch there. Being able to preempt that Sucker Punch completely. Nothing happened. Another free switch for Tyranitar. Amazing plays on Brock's end. Let's see what's going to happen next. This is going to be interesting. Koga withdrawing from the Skun Tank. What is he going to send in? Toxicroak. Back to the Toxicroak. Let's see what Ty uh, Tyranitar is going to do here. A Stone Edge. That should do more than the crunch. Still not enough, but a good chunk of damage for sure. And Toxicroak actually has the Citrus Berry, it looks like. Bringing its health back up above he above half. And Brock is not going to want to stay in there with the Tyranitar against the Drain Punch. That is for sure. However, does he have much to be able to switch in on it? Let's see. No, he it looks like he doesn't. But Tyranitar has the Chopple Berry, it looks like. Chopple Berry not going to be enough, though. Even though it lowers fi uh, fighting type moves. Not going to be quite enough, and that Toxicroak getting a lot of recovery back. Down goes the Tyranitar, a vital part of Brock's team, but I guess he doesn't want to take that Drain Punch on anything. Toxicroak is a terrifying, terrifying member of, uh, of Koga's team for Brock. Now, Brock setting up the Aerodactyl again. He will be able to outspeed that Toxicroak. Uh, however, oh no, he does. He has the Sucker Punch on the Toxicroak, being able to take out the Aerodactyl. Priority outspeed on the Aerodactyl. Unbelievable. This Toxicroak is putting in some work right now. And here comes Brock with the Steelix, just trying to wall this thing somehow, I suppose. Maybe being able to get a... And here comes this Steelixite. Unbelievable. Brock mega-ing the Steelix. A mega Steelix on the field. Of course, we have just found out Brock has access to Mega Evolution. And that Toxicroak pulling off the Drain Punch, it's not going to do a whole lot, all things considered. And I believe that Steelix is going to be able to respond really strong with the Sand Force ability too. A super-powered Stab Earthquake is going to absolutely destroy that Toxicroak. Toxicroak going down to the Mega Steelix. This came out of nowhere. The Sandstorm did subside. No more Sand Force boost. However... Here comes the Tentacruel. The Tentacruel should be able to do massive damage on the Steelix and will, of course, outspeed. So Brock is going to switch out into the Kabutops. Yet another one of those kind of rare water types on his team. Coming in with another Fossil Pokemon, which should be able to handle the Skull. Then again, that Toxic Spikes is going to preempt any sort of burn chance there on the Kabutops. So here we go. What is the Kabutops going to be able to do against the Tentacruel? We are about to find out which one will outspeed, actually. The Kabutops outspeeding the Tentacruel. I guess that means because Tentacruel is a fairly fast Pokemon. However, not fast enough. Brock's probably got some good speed EVs on that Kabutops. Being able to take down the second defensive core, I would say, of Koga's team, that Tentacruel. In comes the Skun Tank. Perhaps... Oh, and here comes the priority. Skun Tank must have gone for something other than Sucker Punch. Goes for the Night Slash just to ensure the KO. Honestly, not a bad move overall on Koga's part. Brock just sacking that Kabutops, trying to get that Aqua Jet damage off. And hey, it did some damage, getting ready for the Rhyperior to come in. Now, Rhyperior, one would assume, would absolutely wall the heck out of a Skun Tank. Let's see what happens here. Koga going for the Withdraw. Going into the Crobat. Crobat coming in against a Rhyperior, and the Rhyperior going for the Earthquake! Koga predicting the Earthquake! Switching in to the, uh, the Crobat, I suppose. Brock could have gone for the Stone Edge there. 
However, if he missed it, it would have been a bad, bad play. So here comes Crobat, managing to get some good damage off on the Rhyperior, which you wouldn't think with Super Fang, and there comes the Stone Edge taking out the Crobat, no matter how defensive that thing was. It wasn't going to happen. That thing was not going to survive a Stone Edge from a beast like Rhyperior. And here comes the Skun Tank coming back in. Koga perhaps hoping to go for the, the Night Slash. Is he going to get the crit to take Rhyperior out? No, he's not. The Rhyperior survives on 18 HP, going for the Earthquake again. No way anything is going to survive that. Rhyperior tearing it up here. Serving as a big problem to Koga's team, to be honest. What is he going to do to be able to take this thing out? Oh, the Rhyperior actually goes down to the poison! That's it for the Rhyperior. Unbelievable at the end there. And here comes the Venomoth. Now it's Venomoth, I believe, versus the Mega Steelix. This is an interesting dynamic we've got here. What is going to happen here? Venomoth is going to have to pull some sleep powder. Steelix avoided the attack. The sleep powder didn't connect. Steelix being able to go in with the heavy slam, and that's going to take it out. Venomoth is down. Brock has won the battle due to a missed sleep powder, but honestly, from what we know of Brock, he does have a specially defensive Steelix, even though Steelix's special defense is not that great. Of course, wow, I don't think the Venomoth would have been able to do much unless the Steelix stayed asleep for many, many terms. Perhaps it could have powered up with Quiver Dance or something, but an unbelievable battle there. Honestly, it kind of played out the way I was thinking, where it would be a close battle, lots of switching, lots of predictions made, but Brock coming out against Koga with the win. An unbelievable battle there. That was quite the way to start off the tournament. Brock will be advancing to the second round.